Warning. The following live stream is intended for an uncommon audience. If you are allergic to bold ideas, unique perspectives, or strong opinions, you are advised not to watch any further, as these could result in symptoms, including, feeling triggered, loss of wokeness, or, commenting in all caps. Those suffering from religious zealotitis, pseudosyphilis, or geocentric tardation should stop watching immediately and seek professional help. This is non sequitur. Never follow. We are on. Hello, everyone. It is it is June the 9th, 2018. You are watching Non Sequitur. I'm Kyle Curtis. I am here with my lovely co-host. He, he wanted everyone to know that he uh, shampooed and conditioned his beard just for you guys. So uh, twice. Well done, Steve. Very well done. <laughs> uh, Dave is producing. So Thank you, Dave, as always. Um, and we have two gentlemen with us this evening. Uh, probably both of which you uh, recognize now at this point. We've had uh, Matthew Powell on before. He got a lot of notoriety for his 22-year-old um, preacher rants against atheism, uh, where he, <laughs> uh, it was the, the video games, right? That, that's what it was, the video games and, yep. and Coke, right? Yeah. That's um, what so he's been on with us before. He's been on with us before. Um, and then we have uh, Russell Glasser, who you probably more than likely recognize from the atheist experience. He is a regular host Hello. on the call-in show. Uh, Russell, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? Doing excellent. Thank you for thank you both for joining us. Um, I think this is going to be a fruitful discussion, and uh, we'll get to it here in just a second. But before we do, just going to go through what we have coming up in the next three days. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, since we usually have our uh, our weird shows it seems appearing on sunday we're going to keep that streak going uh we have a gentleman that believes that uh oj is innocent but not only that oj was innocent but that he was framed by the illuminati and he has a very wild uh tale for why that is uh, we have also joining us red's rhetoric and uh dave dillafior um dave did some extensive work on the oj case um, he's well versed in it, so he will be here to kind of set the record straight for uh, this gentleman that will be joining us. But uh, that's tomorrow at 8 p.m. On Monday, another, uh, I believe, Russell, he's been on, uh, a host on the, the Atheist Experience, right? Uh, I know yeah, he does. Eric, is the, uh, Eric is now the uh, social media director for the uh, Atheist Community of Austin, uh, a fantastic guy, and people should watch that. He Absolutely. Really is. Um, he's, he is very, very he's hilarious. He's hilarious. Um, so he will be joining us on Monday at 8 p.m. That's Eastern. And then the next day, uh, Digital Hammurabi will be with us. I know that you're used to hearing uh, Dr. Bowen come on and do uh, a more serious talk, but he will be joining us along with his lovely wife, Megan. And we're going to be going through uh, Zachariah Sitchin's um, account of Nibiru, and they recently did an episode on Digital Hammurabi about um, ancient aliens and debunking them. It was fantastic. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. But they're going to be coming on to um, go more in depth on that with us. It's a fascinating story, and uh, I think you really enjoy it. So uh, they will both be with us, both Dr. Uh, Bowen and Megan, on Tuesday. Uh, following that, Wednesday, we'll, we'll have Richard Carrier on. Uh, Richard Carrier's debating Sargon of Akkad at MythCon. So um, we thought it would be good to have them back to back. So Wednesday, the 13th, we will be with Richard Carrier. And then the next day, we will be with Sargon of Akkad. He will be joining us. Um, he will have a discussion with Brittany Simon on um, social justice warriors and uh, intersectionality. So we'll have them back to back. They, again, will be debating at MythCon. So a uh, big week coming up. Uh, make sure you join us for that. And that's 5 o'clock on Thursday, Eastern Time. Okay, uh, I'm going to throw it over to Steve now. Steve will uh, let these gentlemen introduce themselves, tell us what they got going on, and then we will start 
uh, the discussion. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'll just throw it actually right to them. I mean, people have known Matt has been on our channel oh, before, so welcome back, Matt. Um, Russell, welcome from the Atheist Experience. Why don't you guys take a few minutes, tell people, if they don't know who you are by now, and they should, um, who you are, kind of what your 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 philosophies of type are, and why, you know, we even have a discussion today. Uh, but you know what, let's start with you, Matt, because uh, you, um, people, people have... No Kind of uh, has some questions for you, so kind of kind of get introduce yourself a little bit. Then we're going to go to Russell. Maybe you guys have like a back and forth conversation on some of the topics dealing with things that have been in the news lately. You know what I'm talking about? Sure, no problem. Okay. So, hey everybody, my name is Matt, um, and thank you, Steve and Kyle, for having me on. It's an honor. I count it an honor to be able to do this and uh, talk with you guys about atheism and Christianity and so forth. Um, my background: I'm a, I'm a Christian. I'm 22 years old. I'm a college student, senior in college this year. And, you know, I look around and I look at a lot of the college students that are around me and they believe in this theory of evolution. You know, like we evolved from dinosaurs and we evolved, you know, this little Neanderthal like, man coming okay. up, not taking forth. And so, you know, they think we're related to dinosaurs is what I'm saying. Yeah. And so, you know, are you good, Steve? Good. So anyways, I'm fine, you know, yeah. I think you mean related you know, to I dinosaurs. We did from dinosaur. I'm not a dinosaur that I'm aware of. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. You mean? So, okay. so anyways, yeah, I just see a lot of college students that have this idea that, you know, the earth billions and billions of years old. And uh, I hold strongly to the young earth position. And uh, I believe that evolution is stupid. I believe it's one of the most dangerous religions that there is. And I believe atheism itself is just illogical and dumb and silly. And so that's the position I take. I take that, you know, salvation is by faith alone. And once you believe on Christ, it's a done deal. So if you're an atheist, uh, all you need to do is look to that cross and believe. And the Bible says you, you shall be saved. So uh, that's where I'm coming from. And uh, that's a little bit. And obviously the news media has been demonizing some of the statements that I made about uh, homosexuals. I'm sure that later in the discussion, but... Um, I guess we'll see where this goes. Uh, Russell, I do know you're an atheist, and uh, atheists are, are a people group that I like to target, and because I, I don't want anybody to die without crying, leave in a literal hell in heaven, and um, you know, I do believe it's important to know where you're going when you die, and the Bible tells us we can know that for sure. So that's my opening statement. All right, that was a Being little so, out of gate and kind of unexpected, but okay. <laughs> guess we're going to have to work with that. No Russell, introduce yourself. <laughs> and by the way, thank you for joining us. Uh, um, that was, <laughs> I don't know what to say about that thanks. intro, but that's okay. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, so this is not an opening statement. This is just, hi, I'm Russell Glasser. Um, I, hi, Russell. <laughs> Uh, and I'm an alcoholic. No, uh, actually, I'm, I'm a very large You will be when this is over. Actually. <laughs> you will be. Will be. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, so I've been sort of uh, involved with uh, active atheism for, uh, for a lot of my life, uh, but I'm not like mainly a, a, an atheist celebrity type person. Uh, I'm... A software engineer, I have a degree in uh, a, a master's degree in computer engineering from the University of Texas. I work at a big game company that you probably recognize, but I don't talk about it uh, on on shows. Uh, and actually, I heard something in the introduction where you where uh, Matt had said something I don't know yet about video games, and that that's way more concerning to me than whatever he said about atheism. <laughs> but maybe we'll get back to that later. We, we absolutely will. Uh, but uh, let's see. I'm I'm a game enthusiast. Uh, I was until recently the president of the atheist community of Austin, uh, and that's been uh, to, that's gone over to uh, my good friend James Boone, who is now the president. Uh, still a host uh, of a couple of shows. Um, and, uh, let's see, I am a lifelong atheist. Uh, my parents are both secular Jews. Uh, they're both, they both have degrees or PhDs in physics. Um, and, uh, I like to remind people when conversations come up about the origin of the universe or, uh, evolution or anything that, uh, I read a fair amount. I think I'm generally familiar with, uh, with mainstream scientific opinion. But I'm just a guy who says stuff on the internet. 
Uh, and if you want to know things about uh, writing uh, web security in, uh, in Spring architecture, then I'm totally your authority. Uh, if you want to talk to me about evolution, take it for what it's worth. <laughs> Whoops. Very cool. Oh, I, you know what? Um, I learned, I learned a new thing in Hebrew. So, uh, <laughs> so excited by my when intro that I'm not going to say that. Russell, I was saying hey, I learned a new Hebrew book. thing. Manisma. Ma, ma I learned that the other day. You know what it means? <laughs> I don't know that one. I'm, a, I'm actually a very What's bad up? secular Jew. Okay. Yeah, I'm a, my mom's Jewish. I'm a, bad, uh, I'm a bad Jew too, but it means what's up in Hebrew. Gotcha. Shalom. All right. Well, manisma. So uh, Man manisma. Let's, since, since we, we, we brought up the uh, the game thing, I guess I'll let uh, Matt. Got, Matt was featured at uh, on Papios first. That's kind of where um, okay. I guess your your start with the media began, Matt. Um, he's since been featured for what came after that, but we'll start. In chronological order, I guess. Your rant about uh, the heading of the video was 22 year old preacher rants against atheist gamers. Um, oh. So, well, I don't, I'm both, I don't know. So, hello. <laughs> well, actually, 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 the heading the heading is uh, 22 year old preacher rants against atheist losers. So, I put them in the context of losers, not gamers. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I did end up talking about video games in that, but um, you know, yeah. honestly, that was a video that I just thought was just going to be for Christians. I thought, you know what, no atheist in the world's ever going to see this. This is not going to go viral. I'm just going to put it out there and let the Christians know that this sure, is how have, I view. Have a private powwow on YouTube because nobody's heard of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So they basically pull in. Um, you know, I, I definitely. They drink coke. You yeah, they drink coke. coke. <laughs> I, I will Wait, say, wait, bro, you know, you a lot coke? of that was just. I, I love coke. I don't think there's anything. I don't no, think there's anything necessarily coke. wrong with the video games. Yeah, here's the thing. I don't think there's anything wrong with video games or Coke. I just think it's silly when you have all these people. <laughs> I just think it's silly when you have all these people that, you know, sit back and play video games when they could be thinking about, hey, is there life after death? Um, is there an uncaused cause? If there is an uncaused cause, if there is a designer, who is it? How can I get to know him? Um, you know, how, how can I know where I'm going when I die? You know, just basic questions that people don't ask because they live in a fantasy land. Uh, they they yeah, sit back and they drink coke and they they play video games and so I think there uh, there is you know, you're making me want to go get a diet coke right now actually but um, <laughs> I'm just uh, I, I'm just wondering if you take that uh, if you take that point of view toward all uh, art and uh, entertainment in general that any amount of time you spend reading a novel or uh, or watching a TV series that isn't about the giant questions of the universe is uh, wasting your time and damning your soul. Well, I think that I think that it's important to first have in place uh, where your faith is. And who it is, whether it's Allah, Jehovah, or Buddha, I mean, either whatever God you, you tend to believe in, you know, obviously you should have a faith settled of some sort. Now, obviously, I'm a Christian. I believe it should be the Christian faith based off the fact that I believe there's not a million religions. I believe there's just two. And I'm sure we might get into that later. But, um, yeah, I think there is a level of importance. I mean, obviously, it's fun to go to Cedar Point and have a good time, but we ought to talk about the things that really matter because uh, you don't know when your time's up. Yeah, but when I think about things that really matter, all the things you said aren't any of them. So, uh, I mean, so? so so what uh, the things you said about uh, about having a faith, uh, I don't really care about that. So just curious, uh, Russell, and, where I mean, do you think I mean, we came? Yeah. Russell, just curious, where do you think we came from? Uh, my, well, you see, when two people love each other very much, uh, <laughs> they get together. Oh, no, 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 that's not, that's not what I'm, you know what I'm referring to. I'm so confused on this for years. It's not that kind of show. It's yeah. not that kind of show. <laughs> not safe for work. I, I, I'm honestly curious. I mean, if your answer is, I, I don't know what your answer is going to be, but I'm honestly curious, um, you know. What, where do you think we came uh, from? There are a lot of different ways to answer that question. Uh, you were saying that evolution is a stupid idea, uh, but it's uh, <laughs> uh, but it's generally what what mainstream science has uh, recognized as something that happens. But if you go through evolution, you eventually get back to the question of abiogenesis, which is an open question. People don't know that. 
uh, there are so, there are so, a lot of uh, there are a lot of ideas and speculation about uh, about uh, potential ways that abiogenesis occurred, uh, but none of them have been settled uh, on which one they are because uh, there uh, because you can't actually go back in time. But even if you settled the question of abiogenesis, you still have the earlier stuff, which is. Uh, uh, which is ultimately the origin of the universe and the Big Bang and stuff, which I know a lot of creationists cite as something that they knew all along. I don't, but being a young earther, you may not be one of those people. Uh, but then there's, there are a lot of questions to which the answer is ultimately, we don't know. Uh, but okay. that doesn't can I, can, bother can we, can me we, enough to study sure. to not watch Infinity War. Or not Russ, play. Uh, Russell, here's not play a game. I find it entertaining. Sure, sure. Well, when you say Russell, when you say I don't know, I mean, it, it, in mm -hmm. all honesty, I'm not full, but I'm, that's a self defense because how can you be sure that you're not well, sure? I, I sure that you you're said. sure that you're not sure of anything. It's a self defeating statement. There are certain things you, you broke up. Be able to you, know. you broke up, Matt. And Matt, you broke up. You yeah. broke up. Can you, you say that again, again backwards? You, you broke yeah. Up. Yeah. No, say that again. You did break can up. you guys hear me now? <laughs> can I, you guys I, hear I me now? I don't know if it's going to sound any better forward or backward. Yeah. But can sure. you run that yeah. bias again? No problem. So, yeah, it's a, when, when I say, oh, I don't know where we came in, it's a self defeating statement to say that you can't know because how can you be sure that you're sure that I you're not say sure? I can't. Uh, it's a self defeating yeah, I, I statement. Because all atheists say, I don't, know, I, can't. Can't. Atheists say I, don't I don't know. Well, hang on, hang on, Matt. I don't know is not the same as I can't know. They're not the same thing. Yeah. Right. right. Well, he's saying, I don't know. Are I sure? How can you be sure that you're sure? That you, it's a self-defeating statement. That's really dumb. I'm sorry, but I mean, you know, do no, it's you a self-defeating statement. <laughs> what? Wait, I'm not following it, this. Man. I'm I'm, I, I, wait, no, I'm not getting I'm this. It's a self-defeating statement. When you say, when, when you say, say, I don't know about. Okay. Can hang on. Okay. It's a self-defeating statement to say I don't know about anything. I mean, I mean that, well, that when you say, I cannot confess ignorance to any particular topic. So basically, what I'm all I'm saying is, when you say, "Well, I, I'm just not sure," like most agnostics, they're like, "Well, we can't be sure." Well, how can you be sure that you're sure that you're not sure? You can't be. Wait. I mean, it's 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 ridiculous I mean, just, argument. Look, it's. I, I think it is. Yeah, it is a ridiculous because argument know. because you're just yeah. throwing out weird rhetorical <laughs> stuff without actually I'm trying not, to I'm understand. Not, I don't. Myself. I don't agree with anything you just said. Well, it, it just, well, it's just curious. Are you sure that you're? Are you sure not sure about where we came from? Yeah, I would be no. <laughs> is this how this comes? I don't know. This is not the direction okay, I was going. It's your show. Sorry. I'm going to I'm going to sit back. But I'm just kind of curious. Do you know what the KK principle is, Matt? No. OK, look, look it up after the show. They call it the KK principle. OK, about knowing something that, you know, OK, it's it's it's, it's, it's you need to look into it because this line of reasoning is this non sequitur. OK, well, <laughs> You know, I just, I don't even know why they're, so, I'm, I'm with you, Steve, but here's the thing. I'm, I'm not so sure why everybody's like, <laughs> you know, uh, sorry about that. Wrong rhetoric there. But anyways, you know, I don't get why people are like, oh man, you know, how, how can we have this creator? And why, why would people dedicate a whole, you know, a whole channel on why there's no God and why we have a lack of belief in God when it's very clear, just based on the most simple strands of DNA and the evidence that we have and it, more recent evidence that there is a designer, that there must be one uh, based on the facts that we've discovered. Russell? <laughs> uh, Russell's according to whom? Well, according to many people, I mean, even Stephen wait, Hawking. Wait a minute. The Many people is not an answer <laughs> okay. uh, because I, you know, I've I've read a lot of creationist literature when when they say, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying or scientists all believe that so and so, uh, and actually, I mean, you're about to quote Stephen Hawking, who uh, you know I'm going to mention. Uh, the, basically openly stated that he was an atheist at the end. So if you are saying that Stephen Hawking believes that there was an intelligent creator, then you're misrepresenting Stephen Hawking. Okay. That, right? Well, I mean, we, we got to yeah. agree on okay, some yeah. basic stuff, right? So I, okay, I actually, I agree like, with you on like, that. 
I, yeah. I know that we're not going to agree about whether there's a God or not, but I'd appreciate it if you didn't try to, uh, like, represent people as supporting your case when they are, when, uh, if you actually look at their overall point of view, they they thought the opposite. Well, well, let the viewer make the decision for themselves. Let the viewer listen to their quotes. I love the book Blind Watchmaker. Uh, written by okay. Richard Dawkins. I think wait, that's a great book. Are you? Do and, you not think Stephen Hawking was an atheist? Oh, of course he was. All these men are atheists. But the thing is, okay. I believe in using what they say against them. And I think you. I think anybody. I think any creationist. And I'm surprised creationists. You know, one time I saw a, a preacher ripping up the blind watchmaker, and I looked at him. I'm like, sir, why are you ripping up some of the greatest evidence against atheism? Um, that's where I'm coming from. I think these guys shoot themselves in the foot. And I think if we actually let the viewer the look at it, by the way, absolutely. I think, I think it's one of the, the best books for absolutely for Christians to look into because this guy, he claims, oh, there's just no creator, but on page 161 and elsewhere, there is full blown proof that this guy, he just must be delusional because I mean, he just makes statement after statement so after you, statement that just contradicts. So I've, yeah. I've also read The Blind Watchmaker. Can you run me through what he said about the evolution of the eye? I don't remember every little detail of it. All I know is when he talked about read it. it. No, I, I've read the book. I mean, it's a, it's a great book. Okay. You know? Well, because I mean, the I evolution highly... of the eye was like a major section in the book uh, where he was where he was giving an example of the kind of arguments that creationists make about why something specifically like the eye which gets trotted out a lot because darwin uh, uh mentioned it uh as a thing that he found troublesome uh you know he, he brought that up as something that creationists use all the time uh and then he walked through all the steps of how uh of of uh, how the eye appears to have evolved based on like uh, species in different stages of development that we know sure. about. Do you, did none of that ring a bell? Yeah. No, it totally, some of that rings a bell, but here's the thing, in his, in okay. his own book, and I'm just gonna read one quote from his book yeah. for you, Russell. So in his book, he said, the simplest uh -huh. life has the amount, the amount of specified complexity or information in it of a thousand complete sets of encyclopedias. So basically what he's saying is, look, what even is the most the simple, this is out of his own mouth. He's saying, look. What is the saying, next look, sentence that he said after that? I, I don't have it. I just have that specific quote because I take his own okay. quotes. So, and here's the thing. That's like I saying mean, the Library I mean, of Congress I mean, exploded I don't, I don't out of the reason that I don't think that you, <laughs> the reason that I don't feel like you read this book is because these quotes, <laughs> these individual pull quotes from Blind Watchmaker and other evolution stuffs are, are easy to get a hold of on the Internet. Um, but a lot of times when you see a quote like that, what you will see is that a person who is intellectually honest will set up an argument by laying out the thing that he's trying to respond to. Uh, so, so you actually see this in scientific papers. You are expected before when you submit a scientific paper to peer review, you're expected to uh, lay out what you think are the potential objections to this thing, because the purpose of a scientific paper isn't just to prove a point, it's to, uh, to deal with the problem as a whole. And so people will say, uh, you know, that, well, there's this uh, common point of view that so-and-so, but, uh, but here's how we answer that. And the kind of thing that you are quoting sounds like exactly the sort of thing that Richard Dawkins would bring up, say, at the beginning of the chapter so that he can spend the rest of the chapter addressing it. To, well, let the viewer uh, pick up the book so for themselves. Let them turn to page... Okay. Let them turn. Let them turn to page one sixty one in, in Richard Dawkins' book. Let copy. them read for themselves. I don't have a copy with me here. Um, I okay. do at uh, my parents' house, but yeah. Weird. Okay. So, I. I Man, I make no, say, I make I no actually, apology I for actually, what he's. I, I mean, do, I, I actually do. Hang on, yeah. Matt, I actually do have it right here. Um, on awesome. page one sixty one. What are we looking at? Yeah, page one sixty one. You should see a quote that says. Uh, the simplest life has the amount specified complexity, excuse me, complexity or information in it of a thousand complete sets of encyclopedias. So what he's saying is, look, look, the most life, we're not talking about life that's evolved. We're talking about simple life 
has the complexity over of over a thousand encyclopedia sets. So basically saying, well, that came about on its own is saying that, you know, the Library of Congress came about by an explosion in a printing shop. It makes zero sense. It's illogical. And I think See, you, well, you have to be crazy. Quotes, remember, don't the problem is remember that. Like, like, like the problem is that the fact that you don't remember the whole discussion about the eye uh, means that even if you did read the book, you don't seem to have absorbed any of it because the because characterizing it as this is something that happened like like an explosion in a printer shop, magically putting things together, doesn't Absolutely. just indicate well doesn't just indicate uh, that you're against this idea. It indicates that you haven't bothered to even uh, to even get right the basic premise. To me, I mean, and again, I'm not an expert on evolution. I'm just a guy who happens to have read The Blind Watchmaker all the way through and uh, and enjoyed it and could lay out this stuff about the eye for you. Uh, but, but I mean, if you're gonna take, if you're gonna disagree with a position, then you ought to have a basic understanding of what you're disagreeing with. Because if I were to say, well, I don't like Christianity because Christians all believe that Santa Claus gives us presents every year, and that's nonsense. It would be fair for you to say, what are you talking about? That's not Christianity, right? <laughs> I guess I can see where you're coming from. Um, I guess I disagree on your application, um, but that's a whole other discussion. I just think I just think the God thing in and of itself uh, should be put to rest. I think it's honestly, Russell, and you know, I respect you, and you're a likable guy. Like we said, you know, like I said before our conversation, I think you're a likable guy. But here's the thing: it makes zero logical sense to start a show and say, "Hey, we're going to talk about our lack of belief in a God," when we have all sorts of evidence showing that there is a creator and showing that the, the universe does indeed have a designer um you know i mean it's just it's just so flat out clear i mean i don't know how you can deny i mean the simple fact that we can blow up dna we can blow up things and we can look at the most simple strands which contains thousands of bits of information over a thousand encyclopedia sets in complexity and just say, oh, well, this came about on its own. And it is the equivalent of saying the Library of Congress exploded out of a printing shop. No, it no, is the same exact it's thing. It's not because these, uh -huh. books, uh, these books, Matt, explain why DNA has information in it, why it is a biological encoding system based upon multiple reiterations, successful reiterations from from evolutionary processes. The, the, these books explain why things like the eye have came around. They, they, have you, do you know the difference between teleonomic and teleological design? One, one do you sure, know the difference yes. between teleological and teleonomic? Okay. Because one thing that Darwin did was explain, in no uncertain terms, teleonomic design not requiring the necessity for an actual uh, intelligent designer. I mean, the nature could be the designer of these things. There's nothing magical about DNA. It's a macromolecule. It is chemicals. Would you agree with that? Well, I mean, again, let it's a macro like, absolutely. But here's the thing. But here's okay. the thing. It is it is complex in its nature, and we're not talking. I wasn't talking about the eye itself. I'm talking about the the DNA atoms that make up the eye, just the uh -huh. simplest ones. So I'm not actually talking about hey, this is a body part of so. No, I'm talking about you boil it down to the most simple thing, and you're gonna find that it has to. It, it demands a designer, just like. Uh, Hey, we have the same nature. occupation, Russell. I do. I do computers. Nature. I do software. I do oh, yeah. software. What, as well. do, you, what do you do? So I do uh, a what, little bit language? of software. So basically, like Python and so forth. But oh, okay, um, anyways, it's a good language. So, yeah, but but anyways, I mean, there are just so many. But if you if you blow up that these pieces of DNA that are very very simple they they're pretty much identical to our codes that we create and so to say well that wasn't designed uh, but we have codes that are designed i hope not you know, i don't know where you're getting that you know, from matt i i honestly don't there's just no correlation you're like a living you're like a living christian meme uh, like you're, you're just spamming these things yeah i think i'll get you floating no. through on the uh, uh don't be yeah. rude <laughs> I, yeah, I don't i don't mean to be rude uh, I don't mean it rude. I mean, like, I get that. You know, it means that. They, they yeah, but I mean, as a software developer, what? Sir, I'm just um, saying he just as a software like he's, he's repeating that. Uh, you know, over <laughs> what you're doing is you're, you're repeating. You've heard, Matt, and Russell wants to talk to you like on a on a level. It's just you. You know, don't don't re, you know sure. just regurgitate the the talking points that that you're. It steers the conversation off into an area where you're having to um, like 
the watchmaker, you're going into something that it doesn't seem like you've had any follow up with or really. So just talk to Russell, like open, sure. like just Matt, Matt Powell and go from there. Well, let, let me let me circle back to this another way, though. Um, <laughs> I really wasn't trying to be a jerk when I was when I was saying I don't think you you absorbed the thing about the eye in the blind watchmaker. But uh, when uh, when I haven't read a book, like I am eager to say I haven't read it. I don't I'm not eager, but, you know, I'm, I try real hard not to bullshit people and say, you know, I don't know what's in it or uh, so. It wouldn't be unfair of me to say that you you don't fully get what uh, uh, what was in that one chapter, right? Or, uh, what I'm trying to get at is you complained earlier that I said, I don't know something. And you said it's dishonest to say I don't know something. So I'm just wondering if you feel there's anything you don't know. Sure. Well, there are certain things, but as far as logic goes, logically we can deduce mm -hmm. that, you know, obviously natural causes can't bring about themselves. So at some point there has to be something that's outside of a natural cause. And so we can deduce, hey, there is a supernatural Whoa. being. There is something because in order to bring things into being, there has to be an intelligence behind it. And so, you know, with that okay, being said, I'm there are things we can logically take. We can. Right. I mean, look, there, there are different know. fields of stuff. Hang on, Matt. Okay. Go ahead, Russell. Sorry. Go ahead, Russell. Well, there are different fields of study because when you talk about logically deducing something, uh, uh, you know, there there is an area of study that's basically pure math and logic where, uh, where you're basically proving tautologies all the time. You're like, if P, then Q, and P is true, therefore Q is true. Um, and then there is basically like science be, being logic that's applied to the real world. And it's basically people taking their observations, which are often confused and wrong. Uh, and, and, uh, and sometimes they're drunk and sometimes they're filling in ideas that, that they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, and trying to come to a conclusion by applying logic to what they observe in the real world. Uh, but there's there's a there's a difference in the field of study because like in math you can actually prove 100 percent that something is true because uh, because it's just the way that the math system is set up but when you apply something to the real world the logical deductions that you make are only as good as the observations and premises that you're bringing into it and if you say i can logically prove something i mean I can logically prove something about the Harry Potter universe, given that I uh, accept all the all the premises about what I'm told goes on in the Harry Potter universe. I can be like, oh, yeah, well, then absolutely time travel is possible in that universe. But starting out with a bunch of faulty assumptions means that the logic doesn't actually mean anything. Does that okay, make sense? I see where you're coming. I see where you're coming from. But here's the thing. I'm not starting out with any faulty assumptions. I'm actually starting with science saying, okay. look, scientifically, we can we can we can observe that there is a cause and effect for everything. And so by observing that, if we go back far enough in time at the beginning of the Big Bang, if we want to go there, the thing is, there has to be that first cause. And that's based and off of our observations. And that's based off of somehow logic. It's not based off fantasy. Somehow the system of science has not come to the same conclusions as you that the universe is very young and that it was created by an intelligent designer. Uh, what, yes. So why? Appealing to authority. Well, okay, well, no, two I think things. Matt, Appealing I think Matt, to authority. What you were doing? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Matt, not really. Let me see if I can address your fundamental misconception. Not everything in the universe must have a cause. If you accept what's called the principle of sufficient reason, that's one thing. But there are things that do happen in quantum mechanics, literally due to the Copenhagen interpretation, that do not have a cause, such as spontaneous fission, weak nuclear decays. These things are non-hidden variable models, which literally means there is no information in the system prior to the event. There is no cause and effect. That is a misnomer. There's no such law in physics. Russell's parents are physicists. He can probably go ask them about this. They'll verify. Um, there's, no, there's no specific law about cause and effect. You're interjecting things that you think are true in order to get a conclusion that you want, it seems. 
I have a real good friend who is a, who is a physicist at CERN. Uh, his name's Daniel Whiteson, and he recently uh, published a book called We Have No Idea, which is about all the incredibly interesting things uh, that uh, that we've come across in the universe that we actually have no idea about. And these are generally not things that, like, religion has an answer to because religion tends to have very nonspecific answers. Actually, um, okay, Russell, I agree with you. I agree. Way. I, I agree on that point. Here's the thing. A lot of religious people, they come along and say, well, we can know everything and we can have, but the thing is, all I know is that there has to be a designer. I don't know a ton of, uh, of anything outside. I, I'm a very simple guy, Why? but you know, it takes, it takes, what's that? Why? I explained earlier. I mean, obviously, and well, you Steve and I really, I mean, you said things, yeah. you said things are very complex, but yeah. then you said they're, so it has to okay. have a designer. That's sure. not something that followed because I already know that things are very complex. Yeah. I already know that there yeah. are all these things that we haven't fully sure. grasped, well, but then well, I haven't you, gone since, with you to have to have a designer place. Sure. Well, since you ask, uh, let's go to Stephen Hawking's quote. Uh, Stephen Hawking said okay. the universe would not Again. exist if there there's nothing wrong with, I mean, this is, right. I'm just logicking from your point of view, Ross. Yeah, but you just um, and you know, was arguing authority. authority a minute ago. Okay, yeah, but the thing is, if you're going to argue from, I'm going to argue from authority too. And let's, let's just look at what now, Steve Hawking said, because this is a true, this is a fact. This is just from Steve Hawking okay. reiterating that, that it's reliable, I'm that you can trust it. Uh, it says, the universe would not exist if there was a decrease in the expansion rate one second after the Big Bang it, by only one part in one hundred million millionths so basically okay. that that number is just out there and he also said right after that quote he said it would be very difficult to explain why the universe should have begun just in this way except as an act of god who intended to create beings like us so it is just abundantly clear i mean that's like saying hey i'm going to fill my house with dice and you know they're going to all fall out and they're all going to land on ones that's the odds we're talking about here. Stephen Hawking those are just... concluded that, wait, so uh, according to that quote, you think Stephen Hawking concluded that there's got to be a God? Well, I think the Bible says included. the fool has said, okay, no. the Bible says, let the viewer make the decision Hawking for the themselves. Uh, well, he's okay. asking me my opinion. You're, I believe the Bible so says I'm, the fool has said I'm not going to complain about you putting the Bible at me. I'm just saying you're not going to get anywhere by doing it because because in order to have, for that to work, we have to have common ground that we think that the Bible is worth, it says anything worth listening to. You are free to quote the Bible at me, but I've, but I've said at, at certain times before, it's kind of like a Star Trek fan quoting Captain Kirk at you and expecting that that proves his point. I agree. I agree with okay. you on that. <laughs> so, right. but, uh, like, but here's like, the thing, like, Stephen Hawking's in these guys. I wouldn't be super offended if, if a Star Trek fan said, hey, it says right here, Captain Kirk said you're a fool. Um, <laughs> but uh, I would. You have any thoughts about the Bible, man? You have yeah, any thoughts about the Bible? That you for can, what? That you can, for um, what you're saying, that, that the universe had to be created oh, for God? by a... Uh, okay. Yeah, outside yeah the Bible. I mean, just science... It, Yes, yeah, science itself. Actually, I've kind of kept this conversation outside the Bible, just using quotes of their own, uh, the quotes of Stephen Hawking and Richard Dawkins. And just because they don't come to the conclusion doesn't mean that I'm going to accept the conclusion that's obvious. Um, you know, and that's why I believe that these men have had a seared mind and that they're reprobate. But that's that's a whole other thing. That's just my opinion of them. You know, and yeah, well, that's I, my question. You know, okay. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this. My, uh, you, yeah. you say that you say that you have, you know, you're, you're using quotes to to prove this, but. I don't know about you personally. Do you have anything that you personally can present to, to back up the case that the universe has to have had a designer, that it couldn't have just came about the way that science says it does? Is there anything Absolutely. that, that well, you Steve, personally... Steve and I would disagree on this. And I know Steve says, well, there doesn't have to be a cause and effect for everything. Steve, mm -hmm. I, I disagree. Yeah, I, I fundamentally disagree. I do believe there is a cause and effect based on the observations. So but, uh, it's, a, it's Hawking, just a fundamental disagreement. <laughs> I can tell you this. Yeah. According to Copenhagen interpretation, you're wrong. Now, whether that's the correct interpretation or not, that's that's one thing. You can go with pilot wave theory. Yeah. You can go with yeah. multi-world hypothesis. There's many things you can, you can dive into. But according to the most well-established yeah. theory on quantum mechanics right now, there is a it is a non-hidden variable model. Even though Einstein 
Flay, you know, he didn't like that idea, right? Einstein wanted a, a hidden variable model, but there's problems with it, the hidden variable model. So we have learned over time that the non-hidden variable model is the, is, is the way it goes because mathematically it does is no hidden variable model can explain every state of the system and satisfy the bell equality. And if you don't know what that means, then you, you probably need to go look at that because you're trying to, to again, get the conclusions you want to have based upon your limited um, quoting that you've done from these people that, I'm huge fans of, obviously. Um, and so I, I think that you're just taking very selective portions and not looking at the much bigger positions because you're being myopic on it. You know, because sure. again, things are designed. Look at, I'm fine with design. I'm on board with you that. Look at, my hand is designed to grip things. I'm cool with that, but it's teleological, or to me, teleonomical, not teleological. It, nature did that by reiterations over success, successful reiterations because of biology. Right? You don't need a deity sure. to design my thumb to do that. Biology can do that. That's what yeah, Darwin's but, greatest achievement is showing people okay. that you do not need a deity for that. But you do need a deity for the simple the simple atoms that that hand is made up of and for the simple atom itself. Why? I'm not talking I'm not talking Okay, let's say for example, let's just say for example, Russ, that you know, and I know this discussion is supposed to be between you and I, but that's okay if you guys want to you know, whatever, whatever you guys want to do. Let's say, for example, I, as a college student, let's say, for example, I, as a college student, have my alphabet cereal. And one day, like, I, you know, I knock out, I knock over my alphabet cereal, and it, it, it spells like, take out the garbage mom or something like that. Do you I would say, that hey, there's an, an intelligence accurate, behind that. Do you think that that's Absolutely. an accurate metaphor for how evolution works? I'm not talking about how evolution works. I'm talking about the design okay. behind the simple atoms. About? We're not even talking evolution. Okay. If Do I was you talking, think that that's yeah. an accurate representation of what scientists think probably happened at the at the origin of the universe. You were coming in and out there. Can you say that one more time? Oh. I said, do you think that the alphabet thing is an, uh, is an accurate representation of what scientists think about the origin of the universe? Well, it depends on which because, scientists you go with. Most scientists <laughs> okay. believe in God. So if you want to appeal to authority, definitely. Most scientists believe in a deity. Yeah, but do most scientists believe that they have made a scientific case for God? Or more specifically, do most scientists who study cosmology think that uh, they have a scientific case for a conclusion that God exists? Like Absolutely. Most People believe, most people believe in God, so it's not surprising statistically that most scientists believe in God, although fewer, a, a smaller proportion of scientists believe in God than the general public. Uh, but Right, because they think they're related are, to monkeys. There isn't, what? Because they think they're related to monkeys, but, they believe in evolution and... Yeah. Okay, but there isn't a body of literature that's basically making that that is basically uh, a peer-reviewed mainstream scientific case for the existence of God. There is there hasn't been a scientific conclusion that a God exists. The personal beliefs of individual scientists, notwithstanding, there is deductive reasoning though, and I love to reason. If we deductively conclude, but okay, natural causes. Science, really. Well, science and logic go hand in hand. If something is scientific, it's logical. Yeah, but I just if something is logical, the difference it's to you a few minutes ago. Sure, but all there, I'm... There's a, okay, there's a distinction between the fields of, of logic and science because science is actually built on the premise that observations are flawed and that, uh, and that stuff happens that we can't control for. Math and logic don't have any such premise, but the whole point of, of science is to keep observing things and trying to repeat experiments in order to uh, weed out uh, what you might just logically conclude because, uh, you, uh, because you started from a bad premise. Sure. Well, what I'm talking about is something that's actually outside of science itself in the logical realm, which show natural causes cannot bring about themselves. So by definition, you know. if we deductively reason, it has to be a supernatural cause. It's not the argument from ignorance. It's, it has to be a supernatural cause. Give me natural an example causes cannot of a demonstrated breathe. supernatural thing. I, don't well, I think, I think gravity is a perfect example. I think gravity is a perfect example. I don't think gravity is supernatural. Well, you do realize that if you change the gravitational pull from 110 to uh -huh. the 40 in our universe, nothing would exist. 
Like you do that know that. And that, do you know that, I mean, that's, that's, that's an insane number. I mean, that okay, is just yeah. an insane number. So something is, there's literally forces, you know, the, the agnostic astronomers right. said there's forces that we cannot hope to discover. You know, there are these forces so you, out there. And, so you think that a God may? Absolutely. And is the God a complex thing or a simple thing? Well, in order to build something, you have to be outside of it. Uh, I have to be outside of a computer. We have to be outside of our computers that we work on. So God has to be outside of time. Sure, absolutely. That, so you can't make I the argument of complexity. Of course, God is complex. Sure. Wait, wait. what? So God is complex. Yeah, I thought it would have been divine simplicity. Okay. So, so I mean, we would you care to lay a way? number on the probability of God having having existed? Okay, so here's okay, but here's the here's the issue with that argument. Two issues. One, you're mm -hmm. actually you're narrowing God down, and you're putting him inside of what he's created, inside of time. God is actually outside of it. So to argue with with characteristics that Your are inside logic of time didn't and say put those on, about what, that's what you're doing. The the logical argument that you laid out didn't say anything about being inside or outside of time. You said that it's incredibly improbable that something complex could uh, could come into existence without a creator within time within time itself because time space okay. and matter are co-relative so basically you're throwing arbitrary conditions on something i mean because i don't think that you really think that this argument is the reason why uh, why god's got to exist because uh it, you know, if I try to apply that logic to God itself, you're just taking a special case. They're just saying, oh, well, actually, that one, do logic doesn't apply to that thing because uh, it's green. <laughs> uh, you know, you can't just pick some property of something and either the logic works or it doesn't. I see your point. But here's the thing. We are, we are within time. And even Stephen Hawking said, you know, if we go back in time, the universe expanding, obviously we would all go back mathematically and logically to nothing. So bang, out of nothing, everything comes into, so here's the thing, either God created the world or the world created itself. And I don't believe that this natural, this, this, this natural cause that we've claimed to have discovered could have just come about on its own, you know? I don't and believe something that would have had to wound things out on its own. Then I don't well, believe that that's the thing. He's out on its own. Yeah. Well, the thing is, so, it you, comes back so to, you do believe that. So you do believe that something came about without a cause, right? Well, that's that's the argument right there. It's the uncaused cause. I know Steve and I disagree on it, but I do believe okay. there is a first cause. So then, everything you said about uh, about everything having a cause is bullshit. Because, because you don't actually believe that everything has a cause. No, well, I believe within I'll, time. Let me, let, let, me, let me clarify myself within time. Okay, okay. So we're talking, we're in time, you know, and the universe. Yes, Steve, sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I, just to get on, you guys on the same page here, you got to go in different directions. The, the, yeah. the, everything that contingent needs to have an explanation. Everything that necessity does not. So if he's positing God as a necessary being, then he doesn't have to have a cause. If he's pausing God, is something contingent like we are, that would have to be required to have an explanation according to the PSR and then be contingent upon something else. So if he's saying God is a, a necessary being, then it's not special pleading by him saying that it's an uncaught cause. That's the way that the theist would argue that, by the way. So I don't know. Okay. I don't want to straw man Matt on that. Uh, if that's what he's arguing. I mean, I think, I think this is just basically rewording the issue because we uh, let's suppose that we just agree that there is at least one necessary thing. Uh, where do we come to the conclusion that it's got anything to do with God or the Bible or anything like right. that? And also, how do we get from that to a young universe? Sure. Sorry, that, do you want me to address both of those? Things, so. Sure. Do you want me to address both of those? Uh, pick one. Sure. Okay. So God Himself, right? So what was your, what was your question about God? Uh, okay. If suppose I were to agree that there's got to be one necessary thing uh, that I was going to say in the universe, but I'm going to, but I mean it in the in the sense of the universe of all things that exist, not not the the physical universe. If if you take my meaning, uh, 
suppose that we get to the premise that there is a necessary thing. What has that got to do with the God of the Bible? How do you get from there to sure. all the other stuff? So basically, so you're saying, what if there is a God? How do we know it's the God of the Bible? No, I didn't say if there is a God. Asking. I said you're, you're asking. a necessary thing. Suppose the necessary thing is sure. a cosmic oh, hand yeah. sandwich. Sure. All right. So, yeah, no problem. So basically, in order to bring something into existence, it takes a decision, which means there has to be intelligence. I and so obviously, whatever this thing is. Well, I mean, because I can because I can come up with lots of things that are complicated right here in the real uh, world that happen and don't require an immediate intelligent decision. Right. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. And yeah. in certain contexts, we have to look at the context okay. of what we're talking about. But I'm talking about in the context of God itself, in the context of God, you know, the uncaused cause itself. Obviously, if this thing would have brought things into existence started the big bang boom everything just expands perfectly where the sun is wound you know in a perfect spot earth in a perfect spot all the perfect elements to contain life if that were the case it would have to be intelligent and because it's like it's like giving it's that. like going to the store and getting it's it's like going to the store and getting all the ingredients for a, a can of soup by accident or for creating a soup by accident that you know it's not going to happen is, you know that, well that's because you're assuming that the end goal is to make a can of soup suppose that i just uh uh suppose that i just do go to the store and buy a bunch of things at random and throw them in a pot and come out with something whatever i come out with is incredibly unlikely because that combination of uh of ingredients you know, it's true to the end power for whatever things I bought or did not buy at the store. Uh, but uh, but that doesn't mean that I didn't buy the things at random. Like, you, you can't just look at the end state and say, oh, this is how it was meant to be. Well, again, I mean, life itself, at the beginning of our discussion, Russ, we talked about life itself and the complexity of the most simple DNA strands and just the most simple atom itself. We talked about that. And if that's not enough, then obviously, you know, let's go a step further. Let's go a step further. You know, the sun is in a perfect spot. We just happen to have all the elements perfect. to contain life. Assuming and, that the intent was to have us here. Absolutely. Right. Have you heard, uh, it have you heard, uh, have you ever heard Douglas Adams puddle analogy? I always thought that was cute. <laughs> it's awesome. It's he, a very good said, analogy. That it's kind of like if you're a if you're a puddle of water and you look around and say, you know, this hole that I'm in is exactly the right shape to have me in it. So it must have been created uh, in order to fit me. Well, you do realize that all elements, if they had, you know, just slanted quantities, no life could exist. So the elements have to be, you know, perfect. The life um, itself I is that, designed. I know that life and in so, its current form couldn't exist, but I don't know all the different ways that other life couldn't exist. I don't know what silicon-based life would require, for example. I mean, and we, we, know, and we, we are... We can have other nucleotides yeah. in it. Yeah. So there could be all the other types of lives out there completely different from our own. Um, you, you, you only have one type yeah, but that's, of that's life -based. To, to, to draw observations on. No, 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 no that's saying totally that something could exist. That's, we've that's that's we, we, we made, we, hang on, Matt, we have made life with six different types of nucleotides. We, go, go look at Ventures experiments. It's been done, okay? So to say that is faith is not faith at all because these things have already been accomplished. So you, 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 you have a faith thing that you're saying this can't be, yet all the evidence points to the direction that, yes, you're just incorrect on it because you haven't looked at the actual evidence. Well, somebody's going to have to send me this evidence because I've never even heard of this. I've never even heard You're of this. And even if even if they have made a discovery like this, great. But let's just talk about, we don't have to talk about evolutionary biology. Let's just talk about simple strands of DNA and the most simple atoms. Those demand a designer and anybody that has, no. a, the, any anybody that's honestly not biased... <laughs> Is going to okay, believe that. So you you keep making this jump. You go with like this thing is very very complex, and we all agree with you. Like you don't have to convince us at that point. Then you jump the gap and and say dot dot dot. So it must have had a designer, and we haven't come with you on that logical jump okay. yet. All right, let's. Uh, okay, I agree. You can't make the argument. Oh, you know, if if you see a computer, you just you know all of a sudden okay, there's a designer. 
you know, I agree that that's ridiculous because we've well, we seen people build computers. In that case, yeah. We exactly. I agree. I think it's a weak argument when people like Ray Comfort and all these other idiots come on and use that. I think that's a ridiculous argument. Well, but when you, know, I don't mean to call Comfort, people idiots. You said that. <laughs> yeah, but here's I, I think it's ridiculous. You know, but but anyways, you know, I think when Ray anybody that but when we look at the argument of complexity of we're talking the most simple atom and we compare it to what we currently observe the library of congress even just a little local library and can conclude that these are similar and that they're actually the same in complexity we can then they're deduct and say, hey, this had way. to have had a designer yeah can you tell us the similarities so i've never seen a library come so yeah i've never seen a library come about yeah. by successful re re reiterations i've never seen any kind of vertical gene transmission creating certain I, things like a library i mean bio, in biology I mean, they're, they're similar they're similar, the they're similar from a search study. perspective in the same okay. way that a slice of pizza is similar to a turkey leg sure, sure. but i mean <laughs> sure that, but those are those are not the arguments i'm using i'm using completely different ones let's let's go with richard okay. dawkins quote he says this has the amount of specified complexity or information in it of a thousand complete sets of encyclopedias. So there you have it. Uh, Simplest I life, that, I thousand I, I complete encyclopedias. Really I don't know if you want to go back to Richard Dawkins when you didn't when you didn't really seem to have read much of his book, as far as I could tell. So it's just an argument against the person. No. Uh, so it's well, just an argument against sense, me. Well, in, in a sense, because I, I, you know, I don't know you that well, but I've just been having a conversation with for you with an with you for an hour. Uh, and I think I've determined through some of that conversation that there are some things that that you're citing that you weren't clear on. So, I mean, I, you know, well, I mean, nothing yeah, okay, I'm going to agree with you. I think you're yeah, personally, yeah, I'm personally, I'm going to agree with nice you for guy. the sake of her. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to agree with you for the sake of argument. Look, maybe I didn't read it very closely, but you know, I don't read Richard Dawkins books like I read the Bible. You know, I read the Bible believing it's the word of God, but when it comes to Richard Dawkins stuff, a lot of times I skim through it. Yeah, I just skim through his stuff. And the thing is, his book, I mean, that's, that's a statement from himself. I mean, do you really mean to tell me that the most simple life, which is equivalent to the Library of Congress, exploding out of just a printing shop equivalent? was not designed because that's his own words like no no that's what? not what he's saying well that's what? exactly what he said i didn't say that first that of all DNA yeah, i didn't say that either and that was what talking was saying either. yeah so who's saying that what what he said Dawkins. was a bunch yeah, but what he said, I mean, just from the quote that you read, was not the point that they were that they are equivalent, but a point about how much information is contained in something. Look, right. Storage if well. I if I send you a randomly generated string of bits uh, 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 over like by via email, that is an extremely complex. Uh, th I mean, you know, that is a very large amount of information. And I believe the quote you were using, uh, and we're in computer science territory now, so I think I'm on more solid ground here. Um, but like the amount of information in something doesn't determine because I can write a program that writes 10 random bits or writes a trillion random bits and the second one obviously contains more information than the first one uh, but that doesn't say anything about whether it's similar to something that also has the same amount of information i guess i can see yeah. your point i mean what, what what point are you trying to make uh i don't I, I mean well mainly the point i'm trying to make is i think you're misreading richard dawkins but i mean it's not well, like richard I mean, dawkins is my prophet well, not, or anything like that i'm not misquoting science and i don't think richard dawkins no. was either i'm not misquoting science itself no, i mean this is a science no it's fact. not that it's not that you're misquoting uh, like the one sentence that you read i'm saying that you're misreading the actual point that he was making with the sentence like like you're reading this individual sentence and and then you're moving on and saying well what you're so you see what richard dawkins was saying here is and then you say something completely different from what he was saying that just uses some of the same words well like, I guess, like this I isn't guess, even a case of it being a problem that it's out of context it's a case of you saying that the sentence itself says something it doesn't 
Well, let the viewer uh, pick up Richard Dawkins' book for themselves and, and read it, I The Blind know. Watchmaker. And, you know, I, I hope they read it. I think it's a great book. It's actually very eye-opening. you read it. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't <laughs> okay. mind I don't mind going through it again. The thing is, when we talk about evolutionary biology... Go ahead, Steve. Go ahead. I was going to say, finish up your, finish up your point, but um, I do want to have enough time to uh, get over into um, your article in, uh, in Dead State and what, you, what problems you had with what they said. But um, I'll go ahead and let you wrap up your, your point you were making right there. All right, I'll sure. shut up, too. I can't even remember what I was trying to say, because okay. all I know is I know we're jumping to this either. dead state thing. But, but ahead, I will Russell. say this. I will, I will end on this, though. Uh, Russell, go ahead. No, I'm done. Yeah, I will end on this point, though. Any of the viewers, any of the people can get online, and I'm not talking about evolutionary biology. I'm talking about the most simple, let's boil it down. Let's not even talk about it. Let's just talk about the most simple strands of DNA. It contains thousands of bits of information which would have had, it, I mean, obviously they're coded. And so it is a code. And if you have a code, you uh -huh. have to have a mind behind the code. And so therefore it would have to be. See, you, yeah. see I so, just want to identify the specific spot right? where we part company. <laughs> What's well, that? I, I diverge that DNA is a code. DNA is not a code. I've actually have conversations well, with PhDs with biologists. I don't think it's a code. Now you want to talk about the RNA synthesis. You want to talk about the codon chart. Do you know, do you know, the, do you know the, the central dogma to biology? Well, you have translation and transcription and all that. Actually, yeah. Trans well, trans the thing. Well, what's amazing about that? Wait, wait, wait. wait, wait I'm going to say yes. Do you, wait, hang on. Do you know how DNA works in order to make proteins for coding DNA? Yeah. You know how translation yes. works, so, mRNA and translation. Okay. Yes. So the, if you want to so, talk about yeah. code, then talk about like the RNA synthesis chart, right, for the codons. But DNA itself. Sure. It's not a code. I've no, I've not met a biologist yeah. besides a very okay. handful that would call it a code because it's just a macromolecule. It has nucleotides yeah, excuse me. in a specific sequence. Yeah, let me right? let me correct I mean, my myself there. Yeah, let me correct myself. What I what I mean when I'm talking about hey, there's code. Obviously, there's code in it, and obviously, it has to have a communication system. So it's constantly transferring stuff through the RNA and so forth. And so there does have to be those three. And obviously, these three things have to come into being at the same time. Uh, in order to create life so but anyways it's chemical it's, it's 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 the chemicals that's all these that's are chemicals, observe, I, need, that's I, why. Need, I need to take time out for a drink i'll uh, get a coke we all scotch now now okay dave dave were we you able to drink, bring matt? that um that up what's that you don't drink matt i don't no okay you need to. Um, so, Matt, what we're going to do is we're just going to bring that uh, that article up and um, uh, kind of go through the parts that you, um, you you said something before we began the show that it was uh, it got you wrong or something like that. It, it misrepresented what you were trying to say. Well, there's there's this one thing on there that I, I did correct in a video. People can get on my channel if they'd like to see it. Um, but I did correct it. When I say that we should put somebody to death in a humane sense, obviously I don't believe it's our job to take the government in our own hands at any time. I believe that it's the government's job to execute criminals, murderers, and so forth. And you know, if somebody uh, molests a child, they should be put to. I, I believe you know basically what the Bible says on that. So that's where I'm. That's and you guys know this. So. Yeah. Okay. But, um, so let me. Uh, what we'll do is we'll go through a couple points. Um, I'm gonna let you reiterate the point that you just made, um, and we'll let kind of let Russ, you and Russell have a. Russell can say what he thinks about what was was said, and then you can kind of um, respond to that. But we'll pull that up and kind of uh, just. I'm not gonna read the whole article. We'll just go through the parts that you think that uh, misrepresented you. It, it state um, this past week. Uh, Dave, whenever you're ready, go ahead and pull that website up so everybody can see it. Okay, so this is the article. Um, is there a way to zoom in, Dave? Do you know? Can't really see where we're. Okay, um, so Matt, uh, basically, you uh, you got into this article because uh, you what, went on. What's um, the Skyrim URL just so that you? Uh, what's the URL just so viewers can? Well, they can probably just Google the headline there. I will yeah, put it in the live chat, and we'll, we'll have it in the video description. We'll in the I, I just gave it to um, the, so you, just now. You did an interview um, with with Skylar Fiction uh, a couple days before you came yeah. on our show the first time. And in that 
interview, uh, Skyler had asked you about your view on homosexuality and um, unruly, unruly kids. According to Leviticus, they should be put to death. Do you still think that's the case? And you answered yes to both. And then it kind of went into a, a discussion about how you would determine, you know, unruly and what kids, you know, into that. So they picked it up from that. Uh, and the title of this is 22 year old Christian preacher clarifies he wants gays executed humanely. So I'm going to let you kind of explain how it was this line. Um, and if you still, what uh, you said during this sure no problem so basically that the article is basically obviously like you said Kyle it's it's about uh, my conversation that I did have with Skyler and that uh, video did go very viral it's got like 63,000 views now and Skyler even sent me an email he said hey check this out man he said our thing went viral but, you know, I would like to clarify, you know, obviously it's not our job because people are saying that I'm saying that we need to take up arms and shoot homosexuals. That's not what I'm saying. Obviously, you know, when I, when I say we should do things in a humane sense, obviously it's our job to take the government in our own, into our own hands. And the Bible does say that homosexuality is a capital crime. And so I've, I've stood before that. Uh, I've stood, I will continue to stand for that to the day that I die. However, I do want to clarify, I do believe there are people who are sexually confused. And those people, you know, God bless them. You know, I hope they can overcome that. But if somebody is is willing to have sex with another man, they would have sex with anything. You know, and that's why I believe that all homosexuals yeah, you know are that's me, right? Wait, hold on, hold yeah, on. How know does that's, that even you know, follow? Well, hold on, hold on. Let, let, let him talk to an actual gay man. You know that I'm, I'm gay, right? I guess you could be. I can prove I don't know if you're gay <laughs> I, promise you I can that prove I right now that Kyle being gay doesn't mean that he would have sex with anything. Kyle, would you have sex with a woman? No. Well, there you go. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, I believe the Bible on it. But the thing is, the one thing I did want to clarify for that was that obviously, you know, I don't believe it's our job at any time to take the government in our own hands and to do away. Obviously, you know, the Bible says if a murderer murders somebody, they should be put to death. If, if somebody right? Absolutely. I think it, I think it should so be the law. You don't that. personally want to kill gay people, but you do think that right. uh, it would be cool if <laughs> I, we had a police state that rounded them up and yeah. killed them. I, I mean, yeah. more specifically, you think it would be cool if the state executed Kyle right now? Uh, well, I don't think it'd be cool. I, I don't think God glories in death. And I'm not a, I'm not a, like a, a, a terrorist well, kind of guy that enjoys death. I would, I would, I would hate it. And I, I absolutely, my heart goes out. But you'd be okay with it. Like, I don't want to see, okay I don't want to see anybody die. Wait, well, you know what? You would hate the thing that God wants? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. God, God wants this. Why yeah. would you hate Here's, that? If God, yeah. That's God's well, There's a difference decree. between, yeah, there's a difference between the flesh and the spirit. I, they say, man, that's terrible. You know, I wouldn't want that to ever happen to somebody. But according to God's law, even if it's a murderer, I wouldn't want to just go and kill a murderer. I, my flesh doesn't want to. I mean, even if it's one of the most worst, even if it was Adolf Hitler, you know, I would not want to kill. But the thing is, the Bible does say there's a death penalty on certain things. And I make no apology yeah, for it. It's, too, it's what right? I believe. I believe the Bible. Well, you I don't know why this is making head talk. news. I don't know why this is making head news. This is... This, I, I can tell you, you young Christian preacher believes the Bible. Wait, 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 wait. No, I, I, re I really want to ask. No, yeah, go ahead. But, go ahead I really do want to ask. I mean, I, I think, do you really not understand why it's making news? I, I mean, <laughs> I, I understand saying that rhetorically and saying it's no big deal what you think, but do you have enough awareness of other people to actually understand why it's making news? Right. Absolutely. But the thing is, I don't think God's word okay. has changed. He says that it's been the same since the beginning of time. So I don't think that this is ever going to well, change. Well, since the Bible was and, written, allegedly. Well, yeah, I, I believe the okay. Bible. I mean, I, 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 believe, I, I believe the Bible. I, I simply believe the okay. Well, we yeah. don't. So, I mean, it's a, so there's a lot less cognitive dissonance when it comes to, I think sure. it's terrible that the Bible, that it says we should kill gays. Like, to, in my way of thinking, 
you're allowed to read something in the Bible and say, well, that's just a bad idea. Let's not do that. And I think where you're coming from, if I understand you correctly, is you don't like the idea of gays being executed. But since God said that it has to happen, then you're resigned to it, yeah. basically. Would that be fair? Let me say this. I don't, I don't like the, yeah, I don't like the idea of anybody being uh, slaughtered. I don't think God delights in death. I don't think God's up in heaven like, oh, you know, great, you know, getting these. No, I, I don't think God's, the Bible says he's willing that none should perish, but that all should come to what repentance. If, and so, What if that is just a bad idea, though? Well, yeah, I mean, take I mean, it up do, with God. It really telling, comes down to God. This isn't, this well, isn't an issue with Matt Powell. This is an issue with God. It doesn't, it doesn't Matt. It doesn't. Matt, do you remember me telling you that you abdicated your moral responsibility by just giving it unto God? You just all you're doing is saying, you know what? I don't have any moral responsibility for the fact that you 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 were okay. You may not be happy with it, but you're okay with the government coming and taking Kyle and go executing him. You would be okay with that because that's God's commandment. You have no moral framework of your own in that case because you're just abdicating it, saying, well, God wanted that way. Do you think for a second that the rest of us here do? I think that are moral people that we find that to be objectionable that we can say, you know what? That God that you believe sure. in. Is not a moral creature if that's what he's abdicating. I, because I, I, I can disrespect, totally see. I, I would disrespect that type of deity. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think yeah. that type of deity oh, is totally even among most Christians. Okay, then then why? Right. Most most Christians, Christians don't Christians believe what I'm saying. No. Right. Exactly. And there's a reason for that because even even still, there's some morality among Christians. Even they find that to be offensive, and it should. Sure. It's a very offensive stance. Am, am, well, I, am I, I believe am I, I, I making yeah. sense to you on that? Why it could be morally objectable, yeah. objectionable by sure. people? Sure, absolutely. I mean, obviously, society is moving a certain way, and I can't change it. I'm just very old fashioned, and I believe the Bible. And you know, this the, well, I, I, I don't can't believe. Know, like, I want to reiterate. I don't, I don't believe it. I don't I, think I you believe it at all. Can I? Can I'm, I I'm not convinced something? either. I, I do. Okay. Can I reiterate one thing? I want to just reiterate that I cannot believe that this is making head news. Like, it's like, oh, wow, Christian preacher believes the Bible. Disconnect. Like, the Bible is the most popular society. book in all the world. To be it's fair, let me, let me, it's let me making headlines it, it, like news in, in deadstate.org. I mean, it's not like you're yeah, on the but, New York Times or anything. Like, yeah, like small, let me say, thing. I, I mean, I, I do want to say, and, and this is a particular favorite soapbox of mine that has nothing at all to do with atheism or religion. Uh, that that uh, the way that we as as people living in society have process and read information has changed a lot based on the fact that uh, the internet makes it super easy for all these little niche sites uh, that that are very very specific to reach a large audience so uh, sometimes you kind of have to recalibrate your your perception of what seems important to a lot of people because the readers, the, the overall readership of Dead State could be relatively small, and they could be just a subset of the population who who thinks a certain thing. <laughs> so when you say, I can't believe this is headline news, I believe that any bullshit could be headline news. <laughs> right? Yeah, I can, yeah, I can definitely see where you're coming from. Hey, Russell, can I ask you just curious? Let me say this real quick, Matt. The, the reason that you're, you're, you're making... Um, splashes and waves is because you have an extremist view of Christianity. Now, most, like you said a second ago, most Christians don't believe like you do. And there is a very good reason for that. Um, and I will be straight up and honest with you, just like I was last time. I don't think that at the heart of you, you believe that me or anybody else like me should be taken out and, and killed. I think that, um, to be straight up and honest with you, I think that you like the attention that you got from the Patios, and it resonates with a certain group, and um, you are saying that to, you know, kind of back that up. But I don't Absolutely. see what it is. I the will be virtue signaling, right? <laughs> well, I, I will say this. Yeah, if I, I wanted I, to get attention... I mean, I've had, I've had big offers from big colleges and big churches to come and speak. Uh, but if I wanted attention, I could go to these fun centers and that are not old fashioned, that are not independent and have a good time and, you know, get into the rock and roll. But here's the thing, like, I'm not that type of person. And if I wanted popularity, I could have oh, it. Come on, man. I'm not wait, popular wait a in a good sense. I, I'm not I've, popular I'm in a good sense. I'm honest enough to. 
I'm honest enough to admit that I like attention. Like, like I do absolutely do certain things for attention. And you have a YouTube channel, so please don't tell me that you do, don't do some things for attention, right? Yeah, well, here's the and thing. What, brought you that that aware of it, their... what did you say that brought you that attention? It was the homosexual thing that brought you that, yeah. that attention. So, of course, you're well, going to go hard on that because it keeps... Uh, it keeps bringing you up in, um, in, in all of these pleasures. But exactly. if you ask me, I've seen hateful people. I have seen a lot of hateful people um, in in my life, and um, you fit the bill on none of those. So personally, I don't think that you honestly believe that. I think if it came down to it, you wouldn't advocate for that. Um, you wouldn't be okay with it. Now, you can tell yeah, me strange that disconnect you, there, you yeah. think otherwise, but I don't see that I in mean, you. I really would you be... Let me ask you, Matt, would you be okay if your parents were gay and your kids were gay and the government wanted to come in and kill your entire family? Would you accept that? And I just want a yes or no. I don't. I really don't want an explanation. Would you accept it, yes or no? If, okay. But that's just a crazy question. That's like saying, well, what if you, you know what? jumped Welcome and hit your head on the moon? That's insane. You know what's funny? The crazier questions are what get people to think critically. That's why people ask crazy questions and hypothetical questions because that makes you takes you out of your 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 safety space and, the, and your and your your sandbox I, I, and it makes you try yeah. to think critically. So let me ask the question again. Come on, you know we're direct here because this is what you're advocating. This is your position. I'm just following the natural line of a questioning on this. If the government wanted to come in and take your parents and your kids and half your friends and execute them because that's what you're advocating you would have to accept that would you not so i'm asking you would you be okay I, would you accept that yes or no yeah yeah but it would be insane okay. and it's like that's like asking me wow. oh well what if your parents turned out to be adolf hitler you know what if your parents turned out to be a bunch of axe murderers what would you do then you think it's outside you know? the line of reality that, that people can be gay and not and, you know like your parents you, you may not know that they could be gay is that possible even do you think that's something that's impossible I, I, because I believe the Bible, and the Bible says that obviously, if if you believe, what? I'm coming, I'm coming think, from a biblical Kay, standpoint. Kyle, I tell you right yeah. now, Kyle's pretty gay. <laughs> he's not faking this. He's he's gay. Sure. Right. By Kyle, but you're well, not faking he, this, right? Because I can tell you, you're not faking. Maybe this. Matt is too polite to say that Kyle strikes him as an Adolf Hitler. Wow. That yeah. would be... Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I I know I could have uh, I could have trimmed up. Probably a little bit here. I guess. I yeah. guess I don't really. I, I guess I don't really have any comments. Like I, you know, I, I, I can. I can see both sides, and I can see the fleshly side of. Oh man, that would be just horrible. Like I can totally relate. But here's the thing. Like you know, I believe the Bible. You know, and it really just comes back down to the Bible for me. And it, I, I don't think it should have made any sort of news that a young preacher just happens to believe the Bible. Um, you know, because there's a lot of young guys my age that believe the Bible and. You know, they believe the yep. same thing. They just haven't gotten up and said they, anything. They just don't believe it quite as, as strongly as, as you do. Yeah, or yeah. As you oh, there's there's, there's quite a few. There's, there's, there's a few. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Well, We're going to get a couple questions from the live chat here in just a second because I know that um, okay. we, we promised yeah. about 90 minutes. Yeah, we've got to get, gotta get out of here in 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which, yeah. Which, okay. which is too bad, but uh, yeah. Did you, did you have fun? And by the way, anybody who looks at Kyle's shirt, tell me he's not gay. Come on. Please, okay. Exactly, exactly. And, exactly. I think that's hey, and it's a great shirt. I love yeah, that shirt. Um, I wouldn't even I don't know if that was in dispute or not. <laughs> it seems to be. I don't think Matt's quite convinced, and I and I'm thinking to myself, what is what does Kyle got to do to convince Matt that he's well, going? I mean, like, I, I can, can always prove it. I think it's going in a different direction. It. I don't want to go. <laughs> I can always prove it. I'm Maybe not I do. Who knows? All right, all right. Well, you do for attention, right? Um, but yeah, All right. I, what, I, is, what, what does the live chat want to know? Well, uh, since we only got 10 minutes, I don't think that we really have time to, to open that, um, that box, but what I'll do is just let you guys kind of take a couple of minutes and, um, do like a, a, a closing statement, Matt, you can plug your channel, um, let everybody know where they can go for you. And then Russell, what's, I know you got, y'all got the thousandth episode coming up, right? So that's exciting. Mm. And, uh, atheist. <laughs> uh, Matt, we'll start with you. Go ahead and um, you can sum up your position or whatever and then um, let people know where they can search sure. you out. Absolutely. Well, um, obviously, my YouTube channel name is just Matt Powell. That's how you have to type in. You'll see me. I got my little blue shirt, a senior picture. Uh, that was a couple of years ago. But anyways, you know, um, in closing, I just want to thank Russell. Um, actually, in a sense, Russell, it is an honor to do a discussion with you. And I hope I never talked I over you too that. much. I, I know that 
I know that we can, yeah, I know that we can get very passionate about this sort of thing. And for me, as a former atheist, I get very passionate about people, uh, from my point of view, being deceived on issues. And so, you know, that's where I'm coming from. Obviously, folks, do the research, look up the quotes. I encourage you to read the book, uh, The Blind Watchmaker, a uh, great book uh, written by Richard Dawkins. And uh, again, thank you guys for having me on and uh, have a great one. Absolutely. Thanks. Right, Russell? Uh, so I'm also very passionate about people being deceived. Um, uh, but I think that uh, uh, people in general need to have an awareness of the, of the very real possibility of deceiving themselves. And I think that uh, like being uh, willing to examine your, your deepest assumptions is not a weakness, it's a strength. Uh, and if something about the Bible makes uh, it does make you uncomfortable, then I think it is like a just God would not. And, and obviously, I'm not in any position to speak for a God that I don't even believe in. But to my way of thinking, a just God would not punish you for uh, kind of exploring that path and, and thinking about it more deeply and deciding why that sort of thing might make you uncomfortable. Uh, and again, I'm not a professional atheist. Uh, I, I really just enjoy the conversations and I've enjoyed this one very much. Uh, but I, uh, <laughs> I like to think about stuff. I like to, to read things and, and expand my knowledge. And I like to know where people are coming from. And I think I've gained a little more insight into, uh, the, the very serious Bible believers way of thinking today. <laughs> uh, and I'm not going to plug anything. I'm just going to say, if you want to follow me on Twitter at Russell Glasser, I made an incredibly witty comment to my doctor yesterday and lots of people liked it. So go join him. Actually, it was a dad joke. <laughs> so not that way. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, and sure, watch the Atheist Experience thousandth episode if you're so inclined. When, well, let or me ask you this, Russell. When's better, yeah, watch, watch an episode that has me in it. <laughs> yeah, well, when's the next time you're going to be on? Uh, maybe a month. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't okay. have I don't have the schedule in front of me. Got you. Okay. Um, well, I want to thank both these. Uh, these gentlemen for uh, joining us. Matthew, thank you. Um, Russell, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Um, Steve, do you have anything else before we close out? You're muted. You're muted. You're muted. Okay, there you go. Um, I did make a promise to somebody um, that people have been asking for an after show, and I promised Dr. Kenny Rhodes I would have one and he could join. Um, he, he joined uh, probably with General Han Solo and a few other people. I, I'm probably going to keep the hangout pretty tight. Um, Matt, if you if you want to join, you're more than welcome to. You know, you know, you're always welcome to come over. Um, you can talk to me after the show about that. But we will be having an after show on my other channel, uh, Steve McRae, not the Great Debate Community Channel, but the Steve McRae channel. And we're going to kind of dive into some of these more things from a more classical theistic point of view, like from Dr. Kenny Rhodes, and then from more of a, um, I think, a concordance approach from uh, General Han Solo, and and I think dive a lot more into this topic. So uh, if you're interested in that, follow me over after the show, probably about 15, 20 minutes after this ends. But I want to thank you both for joining. Um, I think this was a good conversation. I, I, you know, Matt, I, I, again, I'm reaching out to you on many different levels. Um, I don't agree with 90% of the stuff you say. Um, and I think there is explanations that you just haven't been exposed to yet. And I'm hoping that as time progresses, as you, as you stay in the community and you do find there are answers out there to things that you don't even know what the questions are yet. So I think, I think that you're just very, very narrow in your scope right now. But give it time and um, we'll, we'll see. We'll get, that, we'll get that, a, that big old A back on you. Don't worry. Uh, join us tomorrow at uh, <laughs> also, 8 o'clock. Also, you're very brave to come on the show where where people I, just I, talk I, down I to you all the time, apparently. I agree, too. <laughs> I, I, give Matt all time. Yeah. I, I, I do give him respect for the fact that he's willing to come on and put forth these these positions that most of us would find very controversial, to say the least, and, and morally objectable. So, yeah, I get, I'll, I'll give him props yeah. for that. I, um, Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thank you, Kyle Thank you. and Steve. Uh, had a good time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome. Uh, guys out there, uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow at 8 o'clock where we can't see if we can get to the bottom of the uh, the OJ case and why the Illuminati framed OJ. So, yeah.
See you, Matt. <laughs> See you, Russell. It was nice meeting you.